Hello everybody, welcome to Lex's World. How y'all doing? What do you guys think? Another good new space? I think so. I think we're gonna do a lot more filming here because I have good lighting and a nice easy backdrop to hang stuff onto. I think we'll stick it out. But in the meantime, I wanted to do a quick episode about experimentation in your grow space. Now, there's really nothing wrong with being a hobbyist grower. I'm actually admittedly more of a hobbyist grower. But a lot of you guys who subscribe and actually watch a channel like this are actually really experimental growers. You really like to try different things out. You like to see what boosts your yield, what boosts your taste and flavor. Uh, and you really like to play with your variables. So this episode is for you if you're like that. And to illustrate what to do and what not to do, we're gonna talk about two people I know. One is a close friend and the other one is a major cannabis influencer online. So the first topic is consistency of method, and we're gonna talk about my friend as the example. So he is a person I really like. He really, really loves growing cannabis. He just grows it for himself, but he really likes to play with the grow room. Though I shouldn't really say that he loves to play with it, he actually is trying to get to a point of getting the best yield he possibly can and the best flavor and so forth. But when you look at his growing history, he has now done 30 cycles. Within those 30 cycles, he has grown a number of different strains. Very rarely has he done clones. And within these 30 cycles, he has done hydroponics of deep water culture and aeroponic variety. He has done various soil mixes. He has grown with plasma emitting lights, LEDs, HIDs. Uh, he's even grown with uh, T5s and things like that. So he's really done a whole lot during this 30 cycle process and he has learned a good amount about certain things, but unfortunately to this day, he doesn't know what really works and what doesn't because he changes so much from cycle to cycle and he never really has a good way to compare and contrast what he's done before. He doesn't even take proper pictures himself to keep a good journal of his achievements in the past. And he doesn't keep weigh-ins to know whether his weight is actually increasing or whether he's just remembering that it's increasing. And obviously when you change equipment so much, you're not growing very efficiently. I would actually say that he has lost a good deal of money growing cannabis as opposed to saved himself money by not having to purchase the cannabis that he can grow himself. The other side effect of growing like this is you tend to spend a lot more on nutrients than you really need to. Now a lot of you guys have seen my episodes on nutrients in the past and and soil and amendments and so forth, I'll link to some of them below, but the gist is is that a lot of the nutrients, the fertilizer out there that's used is used needlessly, especially if you're spending good money on good quality soil mixes. And when you're experimenting so much and changing so many things cycle to cycle, you never know what your nutrients are worth, whether it's your lighting or your soil that's making a difference. There's just no way to know. The other thing he could do to make his life easier is to use clones in his experimentation as much as possible. Because remember, clones are genetically identical to each other, and you could have a mother plant producing clones for multiple cycles. So you can actually run several cycles on the same genetic plant and really test what works on it and what doesn't. There's even particular strains that react differently than other strains. Some strains can handle extremely high heat. Some strains can handle nutrient concentrations that other plants simply cannot handle. I've seen cannabis that can handle 2,000 parts per million like it's nothing. And I've seen cannabis that starts to burn up at about 1,000, 11, 1,200 parts per million, even in flowering phase. So consistency, consistency, consistency. That's my message here. But the other important message is uh, variables and experimental design. And for that, I wanted to talk about a different person I know who's an influencer. 
So I'm not going to name him, but he is a major one. And basically what he's doing is he's showing off two plants. One is under an HID bulb. One is under this particular light fixture that he's testing. And he's comparing them, you know, which one grew the better plant. And you can see that the light fixture is way, way ahead. Like it's literally got double the yield underneath it. Now, to his credit, he seemed to use something like a par meter, or at least a lumen meter, to get the heights about equal. So he did go into some effort in terms of his experimental design. But then the camera pans up, and I look, and I see that one plant, the one that's yielding a ton, is under this light fixture, and the light fixture has a built-in reflector, and it's hanging horizontally the bulb is. Then, over on the other side, on the plant that's performing less, the bulb is simply hanging from a wire from the ceiling, it has no reflector, and the bulb is hanging vertically. Now, those of you who know what you're doing have immediately slapped your head and gone, oh my god, that's a really bad experiment. Because simply by hanging the bulb at a different orientation, you completely mess up its efficiency. And of course, a reflector makes an enormous difference in terms of performance. So to give your control light no reflector and the light that you're testing a reflector that's built into it, that's just not a fair experiment. So experimental design is important and growing. Back when you used to go to science class, your teacher made you uh, sit down and write out your whole experiment. So that is what you have to do with these types of things, is you have to actually create a good experiment that works. So there you go, guys. Consistency, experimental design, those are the names of the game, and that's how far you have to go in order to separate yourself from the hobbyist crowd and develop your own methodology of growing that you can actually apply in a professional or commercial setting. Anyway, guys, that's my quick episode for the day. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, subscribe, hit that like button. We'll see you all next week.